Hey guys, Darian Gesefi here, back again with another video for the Key Concept series. In this video, we are going to look at um, another question um, where differential equations is concerned. My previous video, we looked at um, um, a first order differential equation. In this video, we're going to look at a second order differential equation and finding the general solution to this second order differential equation. So this is normally a question that comes up in module three for pure maths unit two. Um, right at the end of the exam, they like to bring this question. Um, so with that said, let's get straight into the question. The question says, find the general solution of the, of the differential equation. And this is differential equation. So they want us to find the general solution of the differential equation this year. Cool. Um, we know it's second order because we have d2y and dx squared. That's what we need to make sure and understand. And the next thing we have to note as well is whether or not it's a homogeneous or non-homogeneous differential equation, second order differential equation, that is. And in this case, it is homogeneous or rather, is it homogeneous or non-homogeneous? No, it is non-homogeneous because it is equal to a function. If it was equal to zero, then it would have been a homogeneous second order differential equation. But in this case, it's equal to 8x squared. So to find the general solution for this differential equation, for the second order differential equation, this second order non-homogeneous differential equation, right? it will be of the form y is equal to cf where cf is your complementary function plus your ps or sometimes they call it the pi your particular solution or your particular integral so what we need to do first is find the cf that's the first thing we will do the particular i mean the complementary function which is the cf and then we need to find the second thing which is the particular solution or the particular integral is what they call it sometimes so this is basically right just outlining what we're going to do to find the general solution to this differential equation so the first thing let's look at um or the first thing to look at is the cf let's find the complementary function so how do we find the complementary function? We need to just focus on this guy here and when he is equal to zero. So we, in other words, we have to find the general solution for the homogeneous differential equation or the homogeneous second order differential equation. So the CF is really and truly just finding the solution to the homogeneous differential equation. So this is the initial differential equation um, the complementary function, to get that, you need to convert this into its aug the auxiliary quadratic equation. We need to get that. And the auxiliary quadratic equation will be given by m squared minus 3m minus 4 is equal to 0. So that is gained just by looking at this here. Right? This is, gives you m squared. You have your minus 3m. And then you just, this is like a constant here. So that's how you get this equation here. And we then solve this equation for m, solve for m, factorize it, the quadratic, and you would get m is equal to 4 and m is equal to negative 1. The complementary function would be given by y is equal to a by e to the 4x plus b by e to the negative x. Right, because um, the roots of the auxiliary quadratic is real and distinct, this is the form. And you have to look at other forms because it doesn't always be real and distinct. You have to look at the forms for when it is complex and also to when it is um, uh, equal roots, right? When the roots are equal. So you have, uh, yeah, in this case here, it's two distinct roots, yeah, two real distinct roots. Um, but sometimes it could be complex roots or um, sometimes you could have an equal root. Not equal root. Is it equal root I want to say? Um, yes, equal root. Right? So that is like, yeah. So equal root. We're going with that. So 
we have found the complementary function that's the same we then need to look at finding the particular solution or the particular integral so how do we go about doing that we have to look at this guy here and this guy tells us what or the general form of the complementary function or not complementary function this guy here tells us the general form of the particular integral so because we see 8x squared that means the general form of the particular solution or the particular integral will be given by a quadratic so what we like to do is we like to say let y equal to right so this is the particular solution we're looking at finding and we say let y equal to ax squared plus bx plus c this tells us what to let y be right where y is yeah your particular solution what we need to do is try to figure out what is a b and c but we're going to use this entire differential equation to help us to find a b and c the next thing we do is we differentiate this one time and then we differentiate it a second time when we differentiate this it's pretty straightforward to differentiate this will turn to zero this will just be b that's how you get this and this will be 2ax right that's pretty straightforward and then we differentiate a second time the 2y and the x squared would leave you with 2a so we have these three things we can then use it and substitute these three things into the original differential equation where we have y we could substitute that y here where we have the y and the x we could substitute it here and the 2y and the x squared we could substitute it there and we could then try to equate coefficients to try to find your a b and c so that we can get what is our particular solution or particular integral so this is what we need to do we need to substitute these three into the differential equation into this differential equation so how do we do that simple we just substitute them wherever you see the terms you substitute the values right so in the case of the 2y on the x squared you can see clearly 2a was substituted here that's this and then the dy dx right dy dx you see it's right this is substituted there for the dy dx and you have you have the negative 4 by y we know y is this here so that's why we substitute this and that's basically it the next thing I would do is just try to expand this out a bit right and when we expand it here this is cool we can then what we can then equate some coefficients that's what we could do next right we could equate coefficients of x squared first if we were to equate the coefficient of x squared we only have one term in x squared here that's this and it would obviously be this coefficient here with the negative the negative 4a you will put that equal to the 8 because you equate any coefficient so this is what we will have here and then we could say a is equal to negative 2 right so we know that the negative 4a is equal to 8 so then a is equal to negative 2 so that is a but we still need to find b and c so we could equate some more coefficients let's look at this on the next page right let's look at this on the next page right so just this is exactly what we had um in the previous page right so we just continuing from this point here so what we will have next that is the question we could look for the coefficient of x we could equate the coefficient of x and see if we could get another um, unknown term so let's equate the coefficient of x that would be what terms this here and this here right so we would get negative 6a negative 4b should be equal to 0 right because you have no term in x on the right hand side the key with this is equating coefficients so that you could try to find out what is a what is b so this is what we'll have here but we know what is a from this part here so we could substitute it in here and solve for b 
So that is what we will simply do. And in the end, we get here B is equal to positive 3. So that's A we have. That's B we have as well. Now let's try to find C. What we could equate again? We could equate the constant. What are the constants? This, this, and this. And it's equal to 0 because it have no constants on the right hand side. So equating the constant would give you this here. But we know what is A, so we could substitute something there. And we know what is B, we could substitute something there. From previous, right? We know what is A and B. So we do that. We substitute those things. And then we could solve for C. When we solve for C, we will get out here. And we will get negative 13 on 4. So we have our A, we have our B, we have our C. So we kind of good here. We now could state exactly what is our particular solution or particular integral. So it will therefore be this here. Y is equal to you substitute the value for A, you substitute, substitute the value for B, and you see value. So that's basically it. And remember what I told you all, the general solution for the differential equation is the CF complementary function plus the particular integral or particular solution as they like to call it sometimes so what we could do is just substitute this guy here and remember the cf we found the cf in the earlier part of the question so we could just plug that in right here so what we will have happen is the general solution would be given by y is equal to the cf plus the ps which would be equal to this here right so this is your cf from the first part when we solved the auxiliary quadratic equation and we got two um real distinct roots and your ps is this here so you just put that down there and you just add it on and this here is your general solution to the initial differential equation that was given right that is the general solution to this guy here and that's that's basically it so this is your solution to that to this question here guys um pause the video at any point in time just to go through this question this was another lengthy one um this comes up a, a lot as i said in the last question um of your pure maths unit 2 exam so guys share the video to somebody that you believe it would be helpful to subscribe to the channel and like the video like the video click the like button and i will see you in the next video